Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to start a little series here on NAT. Uh, this first video will be NAT overload. Um, <clears throat> this is something that is tested on the CCNA, so you definitely want to know this. NAT overload is when uh, it's the same thing as PAT. Um, so, like, say in your in your home, uh, you have maybe a laptop and a PC, maybe a couple laptops. You have several computers that access the internet. Um, and maybe inside your your IP addresses are 192.168.1.1 and 1.5 and 1.10. You have all these addresses inside. Well, when they go out to the internet, they're not seen as those addresses. Those are private addresses, and your ISP will block you if you come out with that address. So your router has to change your address to something different, <clears throat> and you can do that a couple of different ways. You can you can use one IP address and everybody represents themselves as that IP address okay so that's what we're going to kind of focus on here that's that's PAT or NAT overload um, so in this diagram here I've got this is our border router this is one of our internal networks and this is our other internal network okay so all these IP addresses in here start with 192.168 this is dot one network so this is 1.10 and 1.100 and this is the two networks this is 2.10 2.11 so when all these guys a access the internet they're going to be coming they're going to be shown to the internet as having a different IP address than this okay that's when and that overload takes care of that so this this interface right here is FA01 all right this is my my internet facing interface and it's got an IP address of let's see here this one has there we go uh, 68.67.65.1 that's my um, my internet facing IP address so what I'm gonna do is represent everybody that comes from my network that goes on the internet will will be shown as that address okay and the internet will be able to tell the difference between the between each PC uh, whoever I'm accessing on the internet will be able to tell the difference based on port number okay so uh, we'll go into that a little bit more but let's just go ahead and get it set up and get it configured I think once you see the configuration um, it'll definitely help understand the concepts so there's three steps to configuring that overload um, it's good to kind of write these down and just be familiar with what each one does um, so we'll just get right into it uh, step one is label the interfaces what I have to do is I have to tell my router my NAT router what interfaces are part are my inside interfaces you know facing the inside of my network and which interfaces are my outside so these two are the inside and this one right here is the outside but the but the router's not going to know that I have to tell it so we do this by getting into each interface so I'll do the outside first that's fast, fast ethernet 0 slash 1 and I will issue the command IP NAT outside okay that tells it that it's the outside so I can get into my other ones this one will be guess inside that's right so zero 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 and this is another inside alright so I've got these interfaces labeled as inside and then this one is labeled as outside so that's step one step two identify the addresses to be natted now if you haven't seen this before um, this is a uh, access list um, or a concept that that you will see used for a lot of different things but they're not just for access in this case we're going to create an access list to identify the addresses that we want to be natted. So in this instance, the access list isn't for access; it's more for identification. Okay, these are the, these are the, the you know we're going to tell the router. I'm going to give you an access list, and the addresses inside that ACL are what you're going to look for. That's what you're going to nat. So we'll create a standard access list because we just need to um, we just need to show source addresses. So We'll do I'll do an I'll do a named access list IP access list standard. All right, we'll give it a name. Uh, we'll just call this NAT. It'd be easy. Okay, so get into the ACL configuration, and we're gonna 
tell it which which addresses do we want. Now I could say let's say I didn't want these guys to get on the internet. I could I could deny this network and then permit this one. And then what would happen is these guys wouldn't get added, which means they wouldn't be able to you know use the internet. And these guys would. But I'm going to just permit everybody. So I'm going to permit 192.168.0.0. 0.0.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.
translations. This will show us what is being added at, at any given time. All right, so inside local, this is what's this is my internal network's private addresses right here. So this is what we're used to. We see one and two dot one eight dot ten. There's dot one hundred. There's two dot ten and two dot eleven. That's all my all my end devices down here that are that are accessing the internet. That's what I see them as. And these numbers right here, these are just random port numbers that the um, operating system will will pick. Um, so when you access a website. Uh, your computer randomly picks a a port number, and that's the source port number. So when um, you know when the destination replies to you, let's say you were going to Google, your computer would pick a random. It would go to www.google, coming from a random port number, going to 80. When Google replies to you, it's going to reply to that same that that port number that you picked. That's how it can tell the difference. So we see here um, that I've that. You know this computer 1.10 has all these different ICMP packets, and each one has a different port number. Um, so this inside global, this is what I'm getting translated to. Now look, I've got 192.168.1 and 192.168.2.10, 2.11, different IP addresses on my inside network. But look at this; they're all the same IP address on the outside. So the internet sees this as coming from one IP address 68.67.65.1. It can tell them apart and send them back to the right place because they all have different port numbers. You see this entire this entire string is called a socket. It's in a combination of an IP address and a port number. And because those port numbers are different, it's going to know that um, that those are coming from different different machines. So there we go. That's <clears throat> uh, showing us what's being added at one time and we can verify that it's working. We have different inside IP addresses and then they're being they're being translated into the same IP address. Okay and then outside local and outside global these are always going to be the same um, for what we're doing here but um, this is where we're going. So all right well that is NAT overload and we will show some other types of NAT. Um, we've got dynamic NAT and a static NAT mapping between one IP address and one public IP address. So we'll show those in another video.